Hi there, welcome to this video on setting up Ubuntu with Vagrant to make your web development easy. Last time I did a video on this very topic, I set up a Ubuntu base box. This was a very nice and cool approach, but it's somewhat dated today. <clears throat> because of this reason, we're gonna be using a tool that you can find at this URL, puphpet.com. It's a fantastic tool. I've used this for a variety of projects, both at work and at home. And this is a very easy way of setting up your own web server with essentially zero extra work, as opposed to our last tutorial, which was 20 to 30 minutes long. This tutorial should be fairly short. Now, Without further ado, let's get you developing ASAP, okay? So I'll tell you what to change because this is a massive, massive tool that is fantastic, but it might be overwhelming at first, just like Vagrant and setting it up from scratch might be somewhat intimidating. So is this website if you don't know what everything means. So I'll show you the ropes. Okay, so we're gonna be doing local development using VirtualBox. So it's gonna be VirtualBox. We need to have VirtualBox installed and we need Vagrant installed. We'll be picking the last or latest long-term support version of Ubuntu, in this case, 16.04, a release from a year ago. And then we're gonna be setting up a machine. The machine is the VM we're gonna be booting up, okay? So we have to give it a name. Let's call it uh, DevBox for development purposes and give it a host name of DevBox. I also have um, my terminal open here and it's currently open at a folder that does no, that no longer exists. So let me just, uh, yeah, so this is located in my trash at the moment. So let me just head over to my uh, own home folder. Oh. oh no, I didn't. Yes, okay, so. We're at my uh, home folder right now, so if I actually close this terminal, let me just, let me head back, okay? Okay, so let me just open up my terminal. Uh, we're gonna be, not my term, what am I doing? Okay, so I've opened up my terminal here, and I'm gonna be showing you, um, some stuff later on. Whatever, let's get back to this tool. Okay, let's get started, shall we? First and foremost, we have to pick our deploy target, which is gonna be locally. We're gonna be using VirtualBox, so you will need VirtualBox and Vagrant installed. We'll pick the latest version of Ubuntu that runs on this hardware, which is 64-bit, and we'll give our machine a name called DevBox and a host name called DevBox. So far, so good, okay? Now, we'll use NFS for our file share. It's gonna be faster. And we need to install the Vagrant by NFS plugin. So you wanna copy this, okay? And you wanna paste it into your terminal. I believe this has already been installed, but it doesn't, you know, it's not a bad thing to try to install it again. Here we go, it's installed. So this is gonna make um, our file share much faster, which is gonna make a very big difference if you're transferring a lot of files or doing a bunch of uh, file system work in uh, on your web server. Next step is heading over to web servers. We're gonna use Nginx. Nginx is just much better than Apache. There's a explanation that is far too complex for you know purposes. Um, of brevity, um, I will not be explaining too much about this other than we're gonna be using Nginx. We're gonna be using a host awesome.dev and that is gonna be something that we need to be able to use on our system. So on our file, on our Mac, there's a file uh, that we need to modify. So we're gonna do that using the super user command and we're gonna go edit the file in Etsy hosts, and we need to enter a password for this. 
And I've set up uh, a Vagrant box before. So essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna paste the server IP, which we can find under deploy system locally, right? Deploy target locally. There's an IP address here, copy it, paste it in here. So I already have it, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna paste it again, just to make sure. And then we're gonna enter the name of, um, of the box. So awesome.dev. Awesome.dev is what we're gonna be using for this web server. Let's save this, let's head back to the web server. Boom. So the project root is this. It's a folder called awesome. Um, our public folder is a web folder. We'll talk about this in a bit as we uh, actually deploy the machine. And we'll pick the defaults for just about everything else. So we don't actually have to adjust anything. Okay, all we have to do is set up this entry here, write it away using control O and closing it using control X. We're gonna create the archive and this is it. We're gonna be downloading this. Okay, great. We're gonna unzip this. Uh, I'm gonna actually move it to my desktop here. That's gonna make my life easier. Unzip this. Here we go, we've got a folder here. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it contains a Vagrant file and a Puppet directory, okay? Next up, we need to decide where we're gonna be deploying this. So we're gonna be setting this Vagrant box up somewhere in a folder. I would recommend setting it up in maybe our home folder. So let's open up a new tab. I already have a bunch of uh, folders for this, but let's call it uh, Vagrant. We'll, CD to, we'll uh, change our directory in this terminal. So we'll CD to that uh, folder. So that would be uh, Vagrant. So we can drag this over or we can do tilde Vagrant because tilde means we're in our home directory. But we'll do this. So it says tilde Vagrant, which is the right directory. And then we're gonna create our box. Um, so for the sake of this tutorial and for the sake of the default config on this website, we're gonna call this new uh, folder awesome.dev. Again, this is a folder, right? So we've created a folder awesome.dev. We're gonna throw the contents of this downloaded archive into this directory. We're gonna click on this. So it's in here, right? We're gonna change directory to awesome.dev. And again, if you need to complete something like this, awesome and you know there's only one or two items with it, you can hit tab to autocomplete. Please do that. I did not do this when I was just starting out to use uh, terminal and it's a bad way of doing it because you're gonna make typos and stuff. So don't do that. We're in this directory. All we need to do now is Vagrant up. All right, guys, I've had to wait a bit for this process to uh, complete and I've had I've done a few recordings of this particular segment, but I just end up making it too long. So let me just cut to the chase, okay? Vagrant is gonna download an, an, an image if this is the first time you're using Puppet. It's gonna boot it up, and then it's gonna do the provisioning of that system. That provisioning is everything that needs to happen to set the machine up exactly as we configured it before. Once that's done, you'll see this. Read me for important information, and I'll tell you to read the above information. Once that is done, our machine is running. But if we visit awesome.dev, turns out we get an internal server error. Well, that's because you may remember we set up our machine and we can check this out, I believe in the vagrant file. I need to actually check. Uh, so we'll do cat vagrant file. Uh, it will look in the config.yaml file. So let me just head over to that folder, or we can actually uh, cat that as well. Uh, config.yaml. And here is the entire configuration that we set up like databases and stuff, uh, MariaDB, uh, we selected PHP 7.1. That's our entire configuration in here. The relevant information is the vhost. We have a server alias set for uh, awesome.dev and we have our doc root, which is where we're gonna be finding our website under www.awesome.web. 
Now you may remember we were pointing uh, using a shared folder. Uh, we were going to use the local folder that our vagrant file is located in, and we're going to mirror that to www. So that means that for some reason we need awesome, and we need below awesome we need a web directory. So let's uh, let's make those. So let's make uh, make a new directory awesome. Let's cd into it, and we'll make a new directory called web. This is where our web application will live. Now you can put all kinds of other folders like configuration and config and let's say um, files, for instance, uploaded files from users, all in there. Um, but we're going to be using this web folder. So let's um, nano web slash index.php uh, and we're going to write a little bit of PHP to just echo this is a great success. Save this and now when we reload the page we'll get this the contents of this file because our web server is going to look at w, uh, var ww awesome web and then it's going to look into that folder for index.php file which exists so this is a great success and again if you want to see more information about this installation just like last time if you have watched the other video we're just going to do php info reload the page and boom this is uh, more information and again um if you want to administer the machine itself you can do a uh, vagrant ssh to gain access to that machine uh, and here we are, Vagrant at DevBox. And again, I can do manual updates of packages. And I can also access var www, which, mind you, contains awesome puppet Vagrant file. And then, you know, the awesome directory we created and the web directory we created, right? So we have the exact same access, but it's just mirrored under the var www awesome web folder. And that's how network file shares work. And because of this, we have access to this now, to our website. And that is how easy it is to set up Vagrant nowadays, as opposed to having to do everything manually. Well, this already existed back when I made that old video, but this is just way easier. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped you. If it did, please leave a comment. Then I know that my video helped someone out there because it doesn't make any sense for me to update this um, this video every few um, years if you know nobody really cares so anyway thank you for sitting through this entire video i'm sure there's other other videos you could have checked out but thanks for watching this one i hope it was informative anyway thank you for watching and i'll see you next time